Today we've got Messier object M9, which is a nice little globular cluster, big ball of stars like all the other Messier globular clusters, held together by gravity, very, very old, orbiting around in the halo of our galaxy. This one, there's not much to distinguish it from all the other globular clusters. It's slightly special because it happens to be one of the closest ones to the center of our own galaxy. So while it's about 25,000 light years away from us, it's sitting only about 5,000 light years, only about 5,000 light years above the center of our galaxy. But the reason I picked it to talk about today is not because of any intrinsic interesting properties of the cluster itself, but where it appears to be on the sky relative to us. So when we look at this globular cluster, we see it projected against a background of more distant stars, and we have a way of dividing up the sky according to the stars that we see, which we call the constellations. Constellations are simply arbitrary lines on the sky. We think of them as lines connecting stars, but in essence, the formal definition of constellations according agreed by the International Astronomical Union are actually boxes on the sky, carving out regions of the sky like you carve out states or counties in a country to give us a sense of geography on the sky. So we're used to hearing about constellations in you know, everyday life. Every astronomer sat down at a party or on an airplane has the experience of someone asking them about their star sign. So we're familiar with a lot of these. What's your star sign, Brady? I am Gemini. What's your star sign? I'm a Taurus. Yeah. What does that mean about you? Uh, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Other than I was born around about the time of May. And this is what I want to stress before we go any further. The position of the objects in the sky at the date of your birth has absolutely nothing to do with your personality, with your future, with any predictive powers whatsoever. I want to make that really clear. There's nothing that, that the heavens can do to populations as a whole to influence our personalities and our individual characteristics of our lives. Having said all that, are constellations important to astronomers? Like, are these, are these just an astrology thing or does this carving up mean a lot to you guys? Well, it's a way of bookkeeping, like with everything else. I wouldn't say it's, it's we, most, most professional astronomers are pretty rubbish at finding their way around the night sky, so a lot of them wouldn't recognize even the major constellations. However, every point in the sky will be assigned to a constellation, so every object that we look at will live in a constellation. For the most part, that's not important to professional astronomy, although it does trickle down into namings of things, particularly stars. For example, um, one of the nearest stars to our own sun is Alpha Centauri. Alpha meaning that it appears to be the brightest star within the constellation Centaurus. And you go on down the Greek alphabet, so on and so on and so on. So a lot of bright stars will have names that are associated with the constellation they live in. So we're used to the 12 signs of the zodiac. So let's talk about what that actually means. So our sun travels across a path across the sky known as the ecliptic. It's an apparent path through the background of the, the apparently fixed stars. And that's where the idea of these 12 signs of the zodiac come from. Your Gemini, Brady, that means that in your birthday, which must be around June, the sun right now, as it's June, appears to be in the constellation of Gemini. So if we could turn the sun off and see the stars behind it, we would see the stars of the constellation Gemini, where the, where, the, where, the, um, where the sun actually is. If you actually want to see that constellation at night, you have to wait for another six months for the Earth to go round the sun and for the sun to appear to be on the opposite side of the sky. So Gemini is more of a winter constellation, but it, it envelops the people who are born in the summer. In the Northern that. Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. Sorry, you always get me on that. There are more than 12 constellations, but these 12 were just the the lucky 12 or the serendipitous 12 that the sun carves its way through. Exactly. So in looking, uh, in doing research for this video, I came across an interesting little story, which is an insurance company in the US several years ago, Allstate Insurance, put out a press release giving the statistics of the star signs of drivers and the frequency of the accidents that they'd have. And they put a little chart up which showed that Virgos, for example, 
we're almost eight times more likely to be in an accident than Scorpios. And so immediately, alarm bells should go off. And so looking down this table, there was something interesting about it, is that there weren't 12 entries, there were 13 entries. So one of those entries was of a constellation Ophiuchus. And I don't think a lot of people out there would claim Ophiuchus as their star sign. But if you look at a map of the ecliptic, and if you look at where the sun travels, apparently, it appears to travel throughout the year, it actually travels through not 12, but 13 constellations, including Ophiuchus. So why isn't Ophiuchus a star sign? Well, in the thousands of years since these cultural artifacts have been developed, our position amongst the stars has changed. So our Earth orbits around its axis, but that axis wobbles, and that's called precession. And when the axis precesses, the whole celestial sphere appears to shift. And so the position of the sun against those stars will change. And so it's only recently that the sun has began to travel through this constellation, but it is now counted uh, as one of the constellations along its path. And so when we look and see that there are more accidents for Virgos than there are for Scorpios, the danger is making the, the uh, conclusion that there's something about Virgos that leads them to have more accidents than Scorpios. However, if you look again at that chart, at that map of the constellations and the path of the sun through that throughout the year, you see something quite obvious, which is the constellations aren't of fixed size, at least not as defined by the International Astronomical Union. And in fact, as is quite obvious, the sun spends eight times longer in Virgo than it does in Scorpio. And that leads to the discrepancy. There and are if, more people born as Virgos. There are certain, simply more people born when the Sun is in the constellation Virgo. Likewise, the Messier objects are not distributed equally uh, um, across the sky um, because of their very heterogeneous nature. Some of them are around our galaxy, some are outside our galaxy. Some of them you know, depend entirely on the piece of sky that Messier and his collaborators were able to scan. But there happened to be, in this quite overlooked constellation Ophiuchus, there are a, a whole bunch of globular clusters. And so I picked this one, M9, because I wanted to use it to talk about this, this little constellation. M9's address, if you had to look it up, is within Ophiuchus.